All right, boys and girls, as old man Hogwood would say, boom, baby, orange pill. Part three, I'm going to try to keep this under 20 minutes again. I really thought that I was going to be able to finish all this in just a three series video, but there's, there's no fucking way. So uh, hopefully four will be enough, but if not, we'll do five and I'll just cap it there. All right. So stay tuned and just be patient and thoughtful and just listen to hear what I have to say. And trust me. Trust me, guys. We're going to get through it, okay? Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. All right. Upon further inspection of my notes here, um, it looks like we left off last time talking about basically how change is coming and institutions are buying and they're telling you not to buy, okay? Don't be fooled, all right? Today is May 31st. Yeah, May 31st, all right? Everyone who's in the scene knows what's been going on the last couple of weeks, all right? We've kind of had like a capitulation. Uh, the market took a huge fat dump, all right? There's no one knows, like, I, I don't know. I'm not a psychic. I can't tell you the exact reason why, all right? And no amount of TA or fundamentalists can tell you a specific exact reason as to why the market dumped. But I think, I think we have our suspicions, right? We have our suspicions. Um, to me, it would make sense, uh, just logically thinking here, that if the price was going to continue to go up, which, look, obviously the it, number go up is written in the code, right, for Bitcoin and for like a lot of these cryptocurrencies. Uh, but if it were to continue to go up at such an accelerated rate, uh, one, it wouldn't have been sustainable. So that could have been part of the reason what happened. And two, uh, it's going to scare a lot of people in, in, in both areas. So one, it's going to scare institutions who have been planning and wanting to buy in in order to, you know, save their their balance sheet, to save their their purchasing power uh, for fear of all this inflation that's going on, all the money printing. And two, it's going to scare the people who have been buying in uh, at, at, at that current price around the 50 to 60, 40 to 60,000 range, right? They're going to be like, fuck, I've spent too much money on that. It was all a scam. And they, they, they sell, all right? Um, so, you know, there's, there's a couple of reasons that people could, we could piece together as to what happened and why. Uh, but point being is don't let these people fool you. All right. Notice that in the news one day, uh, company X says orange pill bad, orange coin, bad, orange pill, bad. Don't take orange. Don't buy orange coin. Don't take orange pill. And then the next day, uh, oh, Hey, sorry. Uh, did, yeah, we've been buying Bitcoin this whole time. You guys haven't? What do you mean? What? What? What are, you, what are you talking about? We never said that. What are you talking about? Pretty much all the big banks uh, have, have been doing that exactly. And in, in several companies, I, I won't mention, if you guys want to go, go to coindesk.com and look at some of the articles about banks and institutions and famous people in general who have, who have initially said uh, orange coin bad and then later on orange coin good after potentially after they have already been securing enough on their own to where they feel confident where they can go and tell the, uh, the, the public masses, oh, hey, it's okay, you guys can buy now because I already have enough of my own, right? All right, that might have been a slight exaggeration, okay? Not all the big banks, but there has been quite a few, okay? Um, and there's been quite a few companies that are people, or spokesmen, people in positions of power that have originally said even years ago, uh, orange, orange coin bad, but then this year they suddenly changed their mind, which kind of makes you think, why would you all of a sudden change your mind? And now all of a sudden you, uh, you're telling people that you've had it the whole time and that, oh, everyone else, you guys haven't had it. Y'all are done. Okay. Uh, so yeah, an exaggeration on the amount, but it has been a quite bit or it has been quite a bit. Uh, one person notable I can think of is, is, uh, Mr. Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary or whatever, however the fuck you say his name. Uh, and he's also been talking about fucking blood coins, which, yeah, we won't even get into that today because that's, that's way too much. Maybe we can talk about that next time. Um, the only person I haven't seen so far say that they, in the beginning, that they think orange coin bad and then now change their mind is Charlie Munger. Uh, he's, and he's, he's a degenerate fat slob who, uh, you know, basically is no better than, a, than the Commonwealth living off of welfare. He's just doing it on a larger scale, but I digress. Sorry for another time. Um, so yeah, not everyone is doing it. Not all the big banks, quite a few are. Okay. And, uh, maybe they aren't doing it one day 
and then the next day saying that they changed your mind, but it's been like a one or two year process. Okay. So just wanted to note that. And again, go look at some articles, go do some research. You guys can see how I won't sit here and point out the exact ones saved all the time, but go ahead and do that. Actually, you know what? Uh, let's actually talk about the blood coin because that really pisses me off. All right. So Kevin O'Leary is saying that he got rid of all of his Bitcoin that is that is not uh, a blood coin, all right? Or he's calling these things blood coins, okay? And what he's saying that denotes a blood coin is a coin mined with unclean energy in China, all right? Anybody who is, and I'm sure some of you guys are already shaking your heads because you, you know what I'm talking about. Anybody who knows anything about this kind of stuff, you, you already know where I'm going with this, but let's just, uh, Instead of pointing out every single thing that's wrong and just stupid about this, I just wanted to point out some things that I've that I've observed to be wrong and stupid that I haven't seen other people saying. So, okay. First and foremost, um, if if it's going to be something that's fungible, all right. If if something that's that's that is a procurer of wealth, a a vessel for wealth that's going to be fungible like gold, all right. You can't discriminate off of gold that was mined in China versus gold that was mined in America, all right? Back in the medieval times, they most certainly didn't care where the gold came from. Uh, in fact, they, they sent uh, Euro European uh, monarchs, sent entities over to the Americas to take as much gold as they possibly could because quite frankly, they didn't care that the Amazonians were sacrificing humans and ripping their hearts out and dumping blood all over the, the golden palaces that they have or whatever, right? So. All right. For, first things I wanted to point out was that uh, just just the 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 simple theology behind that is just kind of wrong. But let's just say for argument's sake, um, let's just say for argument's sake that it's not morally okay to have Bitcoin that's mined with unclean energy. All right. Good luck figuring out which one is okay and uh, which one is not. But and, but to push all that I said aside, another thing that, I, that I've been thinking about that really makes me like question this dude's sanity is and how much he understands at least Bitcoin, not even crypto and currency in general, but just Bitcoin is, okay, for my people out there who know, you guys know that one whole Bitcoin, so a whole coin, is comprised of X amount of Satoshis, all right? I believe it's 100 million Satoshis, sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's 100 million last time I checked, okay? And you can think of this as the same way as a $100 bill. You can take the $100 bill to a bank and you can get $101 bills, all right? And so what if you do that and you know some of those ones have been in the stripper's tits and some people have used those ones to snort cocaine with and some people use those ones to uh, buy and sell drugs with, all right? Do we discriminate against that? Currently, no, we don't, okay? Uh, and to go even further than that, all right, if you, unless you were buying one whole Bitcoin, okay, directly from a miner, right, so that it's a freshly minted Bitcoin that came off of a, after a block being mined, um, the chances of you picking up a whole Bitcoin off the market somewhere that, that, it, that all 100 million Satoshis originated from the same original Bitcoin are, pretty fucking slim, okay? And that's because when people, when the market fluctuating, moving back and forth, people sell portions of a Bitcoin, fractions of a Bitcoin. People use sometimes Bitcoin for payment processing and people will send, you know, 10,000 Satoshis, 100,000 Satoshis, 5 million Satoshis, back and forth here and there, all right? And then when some person collects X amount, okay, not all those Satoshis came originate from the same place. So like, what if one, out of 100 million of those Satoshis that you have that constitutes your whole Bitcoin came from a blood coin in China. Does that negate all of my whole coin? Is my whole coin just a blood coin now? Uh, if, if that makes sense to anybody, just please, somebody send Kevin O'Leary a message and tell him just, just stop, all right? Just go to sleep, dude. Just stop, just go to sleep, please. All right, so back to the topic at hand, okay? The 2008 financial crisis, all right? And we're, we're gonna start there, although this really kind of started long before that. Um, in one of the previous in one of the previous uh, episodes, I mentioned uh, how this year marks the 50th year anniversary of which we were taken off of the gold standard. 
Thanks to good old Papa Richard Nixon. All right. But <clears throat> I would like to track this back to 2008. Okay. And really, I'll, I'll just note this. Um, even before 2008, back when 9-11 happened, um, the Federal Reserve, the Fed, and several other entities made laxidized, or they made the requirements for mortgages a little bit more laxidated. Uh, or more lackadaisical, am I saying that right? I don't really know. Uh, they, they relaxed the requirements for some mortgages, okay? And that, that plays into this, but <clears throat> 2008, what happened? What happened in 2008? Um, basically, principal and interest paid, uh, excuse me, a mortgage. What is a mortgage? You guys don't know. A mortgage is really uh, a loan that you take from a bank, okay, in order to procure a house, all right? So usually you get the bank a down payment, you sign some papers, you do blah, 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 X, Y, Z, and then you get a mortgage, okay? And what is a mortgage? By definition, mortgage is principal and interest paid to the person who owns the paper, all right? So they, when, you, when you go and get a mortgage from a bank, you get the house, all right? You, you have to pay back X amount of money in both principal and interest, all right? And you're paying it to the person who owns the paper, all right? Uh, and I say the person who owns the paper because Usually, in most cases, the bank that you originate your mortgage from does not keep that paper, right? Uh, okay, so just wanted to say that. It's, it's sold to other banks, all right? And uh, eventually, what happened was something called mortgage-backed securities, all right? And basically, banks uh, securitized mortgages, and they sold these to investors. So other banks sold them to smaller banks, sold them to larger banks, uh, they would sell them to private investors, right? And if you guys don't know what securitized means, it, a, a security is like, okay, a stock. Stocks are a security, right? Currently, uh, you guys know Ripple and XRP. Uh, Ripple is being sued by the SEC right now because their lawsuit is stating, stating that their native token for the Ripple network, XRP, is a security, right? Or they're, they're trying to argue that. So what happened was these debt, this debt entity, mortgages became securitized, all right? And there's plenty of reasons for that. Some of them is because it's not a bad security to have for some investors because, you know, they got paid, they got to keep, get continual interest payments, all right, from the from the borrower. And let's just say the borrower defaults on their loan. Uh, that the borrower stops paying them, then the People who own the paper, the investors, the larger banks, can just simply go and foreclose the home, and basically they sell the home, and they still have money. Uh, and this is this is a benefit, and it's less risky for them, or was less risky for them, and kind of is because home values do what over time? They rise, they open, they go up, right? So if someone had took a mortgage out ten years ago, and they owe one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And then 10 years later, the house is worth $250,000. Uh, it's like, it's a no brainer for the banks, right? It's a no brainer, you know, they get paid income via interest, all right? And then the person stops paying and they default, they can just take the house and sell it and they still profit it, okay? So because of this, because uh, mortgage-backed securities started becoming uh, of higher interest to investors, the need and the want to hand out mortgages to people went up, okay? It rose, okay? Because it's investors are want, wanting these mortgage-backed securities for the reasons we just spoke about, right? But, but the number of people who were considered safe to give a mortgage to, and they, they have different ratings, right? Uh, but basically, like, the, the most responsible people who you could give a mortgage to and you could expect them to pay and not default, and they, they're probably, you know, uh, they have a good job history, they have money in the bank, X, Y, and Z requirements. Um, these people were gone. Why were they gone? Because they already owned homes, right? They already owned houses, okay? And the people who didn't were on the lower end of the spectrum. They were probably less financially stable. They probably didn't have a stable job or a job history. They probably had nothing to their name. And thus, um, yeah, all the people who could get a mortgage already had one. So before when I was saying that they relaxed the requirements for mortgages, uh, this is the reason why. And it, it just, it, it intensified, well, th this happened a while ago because basically what the government did was they said, okay, we need to stop discriminating against people from certain socioeconomical uh, backgrounds and certain races and stuff. And 
that we should let more people have a mortgage, uh, even if they maybe on paper sh sh don't sh or are uh, considered to be risky. Okay, and thus this happened. Okay, and they relaxed the rules, and then pretty much anyone at that time could go and get a mortgage. In fact, they were giving out mortgages that basically like the person had could choose basically not to pay, uh, which sounds retarded, but just hear me out. Uh, from my understanding, because I wasn't buying homes back then, but from my understanding. Uh, the person could just say, all right, this month I'm not going to pay and you know, I can just pay again next month. And anytime they didn't pay, the amount that was missed on that month was just concatenated or tacked on to the end of the, of the, the loan. All right. So what had happened was we had this influx. Uh, we had this larger need for more mortgages. All right. We had this influx of people getting mortgages that probably, you could argue, shouldn't have been given these mortgages. So what happens now that more people are able to get mortgages? Well, that meant the demand for housing went up. And what happens when demand increases? Number go up, right? Prices go up. Okay. So basically, um, that's exactly what happened. The, the demand went up, prices went up and the people, <laughs> lo and behold, these people started defaulting on mortgages. Okay. Um, we had credit default swaps going on, uh, like all kinds of like, all kinds of just flat out fuckery was just going on. Okay. And this pretty much just created a web of just, just generally fucked up numerics for the entire system for everyone. And this trickled down all throughout the economy because mortgages, uh, are, in, are, are, are a crucial part of this economy because banks give them out. Investors invest in mortgage backed securities. Uh, it, I won't get too complicated, but just, it, it just know, that if the mortgage and the home and the housing industry is starting to get screwy, uh, that tends to give problems everywhere in the economy. All right. And thus there was a bunch of chaos and pandemonium. People were catching fire in the streets, not literally, but, um, it, that's kind of like what it, what it looked like or felt like in wall street at least. All right. And so what happened? What did big daddy, big daddy, uncle Sam, big daddy G big daddy government do? Uh, they bailed out all these banks and institutions and all these wealthy, extremely wealthy players. Okay. Uh, they basically gave them USD airdrops. All right. Uh, and they saved these people, but the Commonwealth, the normal people, the people who they don't quite care about people who aren't in that uh, upper echelon of 1%, which Believe me, a 1% is not, does not mean that you're a millionaire. It's a lot more than that, right? A 1% 1, 1 does not mean that you make $100,000 a year. Maybe in, in certain degrees it can, but people that I'm talking about are a lot more wealthy than just in the millions, okay? A lot more wealthy. Um, and so even people who are, you know, trying to work their way up from lower to middle class, or middle to upper middle class, and so on and so forth, they didn't get the bailouts, okay? They were screwed. They were kind of left holding the bag, they, they got basically got rug pulled and these institutions and these banks and these lenders and these investors, they all got bailed out. Okay. Thanks to the good old USD airdrop causes problems, right? It's a little bit unfair when you say to uh, people who are trying to work their way up into the, into the world. And that's important uh, to note because it's almost as if, almost as if, um, we have, you know, us common folk have, you know, common folk have to play by certain rules and regulations, but the people who are considered not common folk don't have to play by those rules and regulations. And they can basically just make those rules and regulations for everybody else, but they can break them themselves, which just generally leads to, um, sort of like a, uh, diabolical feudal system, right? It's kind of what's going on. Maybe a, a tech technocracy one would say, all right. Plenty cool words. If you have a cool word for that, drop a comment, let me know because I can think of a lot of them, but I, li I like those. And thus that brings us to the inception of Bitcoin, the Genesis block, all right, which was the first block to be mined on the Bitcoin network, 2008, all right, January 3rd, 2008. And in the Genesis block is actually a reference to an article from the Times talking about the bailout of the banks. 
Okay, and put a picture for that on the screen with the Genesis block so you guys can see. It looks pretty cool. My apologies, guys. I said 2008, but I meant 2009. So, one could argue that Bitcoin was created as uh, a means to prevent this from happening again in the future. Perhaps. Yes, no? You tell me. That's what I think. Next, we're going to get into the whole uh, Crab 17 and Crab 19 uh, economic situation, which was almost, almost, it was just, just worse, right? When that's kind of still going on right now, worse than the 2008 situation, okay? Um, that's all we're going to do for this one because that's probably going to take its whole video on its own. Take the orange pill before the orange pill takes you. Buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum. Fuck, dude, buy, buy Dogecoin, all right? It's probably better than the US dollar by now, all right? We'll, we'll know that the, the US economy and the US dollar is completely collapsed when one Doge is greater than one US dollar. That's all I got for tonight, guys. Like, comment, subscribe at eLiftProgram on Instagram, eLiftProgram.com, developerdegression.com. And I'm out.